Is pine sol corrosive to some metals? Let's find out. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is my third video on pine sol as a parts cleaning solvent. I did a shootout between pine sol and purple power. And then I also showed the effectiveness of pine sol in an ultrasonic cleaner. I've used this to clean the throttle bodies for my Frankenstein EFI project and was very happy with the results. I had a comment on one of my videos where someone said that they had put pine sol in a galvanized container. And after a period of time, it started leaking. Upon further inspection, they saw that the pine sol had actually eaten away all of the zinc and started to rust the container. And that's why it started to leak. And that got me thinking, is this still a really good soaking solution? So I decided to derive an experiment with some very basic metals that a person might end up putting in some fine saw for the purpose of cleaning them. I have steel, I have extruded aluminum, I have cast aluminum. Now the reason there are two different aluminums there is the chemical composition of cast aluminum is different of that of extruded aluminum. I have copper, I have zinc, and I have brass. All six of these pieces were put in my blast cabinet and glass beaded to clean them up. And then on each one of them, I polished one side. Now this isn't a mirror finish kind of situation but it is enough to see that there is a bit of a polish on it. Now, the reason I did that is the pine saw, if it etches into the metal, it should eliminate the polish. And so I wanted to give it the opportunity to be visibly noticeable. Also, I only filled these containers up about a half an inch, and I did that on purpose so that we will have a distinct line between where the part was in the pine saw and where it was out of the pine saw. Ultimately, by the end of this, we should have a pretty good idea on how pine saw affects these metals in the long term. Now, I'm not saying that if it you know, eats into any of these that you can or cannot use it as a cleaner for your carburetor or your piston rod assemblies. What I am saying is this will give you more information so that you can make an educated decision. So let's go ahead and get each part put in the solution and we'll give it some time and see how it goes. After shooting the intro and initial setup, I had to change out three pieces of metal. I had to change out the brass piece, the copper piece, and the steel piece. And the reason I had to do that is the metal scraps that I chose were too small. The steel piece fell completely into the solution. The copper fell completely into the solution. The brass piece was big enough a little bit of it was out of the solution, but I wanted to go with a bigger piece just so that we could get a good clean comparison. I wanted to be completely transparent and make sure that you were aware of that because I didn't want any of you with a keen eye to go, okay, he put in a big square piece of steel and now he's got this long skinny piece of steel. In other words, I don't want to be accused of a bait and switch. We're going to give these 24 hours soak and examine them, see how they look. I will say this, these have only been in the solution for about 15 minutes, and I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or not, but the zinc in the pine saw is foaming. That means that it is eating into the metal. If we haven't learned anything else by the time this video is all said and done, that right there shows me that if you're going to use a solution to clean a car part that has not been specifically designed to clean that car part, do some testing. Don't just take your thousand dollar car part and throw it in a vat of pine saw and hope that it's gonna be nice and shiny by the next day because obviously different metals are gonna react differently to the solution.
It's been 24 hours, and every single piece of metal here is intact. So for a short-term soak, I would feel confident, do this at your own risk, putting any of these metals in the pine saw for the short term. So let's take a look at the results. First, we have the steel. Now this is interesting to me. That right there is the line where this half was in the solution and this half was outside of the solution. And we rusted where we were out of the solution. So if you're going to fully submerge a part, I think the steel's gonna hold up just fine. But if you're gonna partially submerge it, you are gonna have rust at the liquid line. This is the aluminum piece that was extruded aluminum, and there is a line, but the line is just brightness. It's just brighter where it was in the solution. Whereas you would expect it to be darker had it actually been etched. And same thing on this side. So this was the polished side. This is the flat side. And again, it's just brighter in color where it was in the solution. So I'm, I'm going to attribute that to cleanliness. There's very little difference on this piece of cast aluminum. This is the polished side, and there is a slight color difference, but everything is still shiny. I would say it's pretty reasonable that aluminum has very little effect from pine sol. Copper, it etched that pretty significantly, especially, again, at the line where the copper met oxygen. Now, if you look right there, this is the section that I shined. There's still some pretty good shine there. Safe to say, once again, it hasn't, you know, really corrosively eaten it, but it has affected it. The zinc, the reason we are all here. There is a very distinct line. You can see where it was in the pine saw. You can see this polished section that I had is totally etched and not polished anymore. And it definitely definitely is eating the zinc. So without a doubt, pine saw and zinc are not a good combination. And last, we have brass. Now, for those of you that don't realize this, brass is made by mixing zinc and copper. So being that both of these metals were etched by the pine saw, it's safe to say that brass is probably also going to be etched by pine saw. And sure enough, you can see right here, this is the half that was in the pine saw, and sure enough, we have some etching. Interestingly enough, though, as an alloy, it's less etched, in my opinion, than the copper and the zinc alone. Something is helping to protect it. So that was 24 hours. That's about the amount of time that most of you are going to drop a carburetor into pine saw, or you're going to put your pistons or whatever it is that you're wanting to clean up in the pine saw solution. But what happens if you put it in the bucket and you forget about it? What happens if it's multiple days in the solution? Well, we're going to find out. I'm going to put all of these back in the solution and we're going to let it sit for a few days. And then we will come back and see just how corrosive the pine saw was to these various metals after an extended soak. If we haven't learned anything else here, for me, I want something that's gonna aggressively clean the parts. And sometimes that means it's gonna be so aggressive that it might etch the metal. So if there's a way that we can clean them with the aggressive cleaner, but not have it in the solution so long that it etches the metal, it's a win. And I have that solution for this solution, and that's an ultrasonic cleaner. If you haven't seen my video on that, check that out. It's amazing how fast an ultrasonic cleaner filled with pine saw will clean up dirty parts. All right, let's put these back in. And we'll be back after a few days, and I will show you what extended soaking in pine salt does to these six metals. So the verdict's in. It has been four days. In other words, 96 hours that these six pieces of metal were soaking in these six containers of pine salt. The results, I think, are very telling. First, we have the steel. 
And as you can see, there is quite a bit of rust on the area that is outside of the pine saw. In other words, it was getting the fumes and vapors. It was in contact with oxygen and it was not submerged. So that right there shows that if you're gonna do any metal soaking, regardless of kind, because this type of behavior happened on other pieces as well, you wanna fully submerge it. That is going to minimize oxidization. Second, if we look at this piece of steel, it looks very etched. And based on that observation, you may think that pine salt etches steel. However, if we look at the side that I polished, it is still very polished. So what's going on here? Why is this looking etched and this still looking polished? Well, it's quite simple. This piece of steel had mill scale on it, and it's the mill scale that was being eaten into. I've heard of people using things like vinegar or muriatic acid to remove the mill scale from steel. And apparently, the same properties that those chemicals have on mill scale, to some degree, pine saw has. But etching of the actual steel did not take place. So I would feel very confident using pine saw on anything steel as long as it is fully submerged. Because again, there is a very distinct rust line and all kinds of rusty spots where the part was out of the pine saw. Next, we come to the aluminum. We have both the extruded aluminum and the cast aluminum. Initial observation, again, shows two different colors in the extruded aluminum, but all that really is is cleanliness. I really don't think there was any metal loss there. If we look at the polished side, it's still shiny. It's just a matter of a brighter color. So I think all the pine salt did is cleaned it. And the same is true of the cast aluminum. Same thing. This is the side that I roughly polished, and I am not seeing any etching there. Slight line where the part was out of the solution, but again, I think that's cleanliness. And a very interesting thing, there was no speckling, there was no marks, there was no signs of corrosion or damage at the line or above the line. We know that the solution mixed with oxygen, mixed with metal, can create that effect. And so if Pine Sol had anything damaging to do to aluminum, I think we would see it above the line or at the line. I think Pine Sol is an outstanding solution for cleaning anything aluminum. Now, this is huge. Not all lightweight car parts are made of aluminum. A lot of carburetor bodies and other things are actually made of a cast zinc. Pot metal common in the automotive world is called pot metal because it has a whole bunch of metals thrown into the pot. The important thing is the main metal in pot metal is zinc. So you have to make sure that the part you have is truly aluminum rather than zinc. But we'll get to that when we come back down here and actually see how the zinc fared. Copper. Again, definitely some etching. Definitely significant corrosion and oxidization at the liquid line. Definite etching to the copper, even the shininess, there is still some polished area, but it has affected the copper. Then we get to the zinc. The zinc was eaten into the most. You have distinctive lines where the pine saw stopped. It's very chalky. If we look at the section that I polished, it is totally etched. There is no longer any polish there. The zinc fared the worst in the pine saw. So that takes me back to pot metal and some carburetor bodies being made out of pot metal. Now, this is mostly intact. Hardly any metal was actually removed from this. And the same is true of all of these pieces of metal. I took a set of digital calipers and did measurements and I could not find any significant reduction in metal. So I don't think that pine saw over a relatively short, a day or two period of time is gonna change anything dimensionally, is gonna affect anything like booster air vents or various parts of a carburetor that have tiny little holes that are very specific size for a very specific reason. But you do have to be aware that the chance of the pine saw etching your metal 
is definitely there depending on the type of metal. And zinc is why we're here. It was a comment about the pine saw eating away at the lining of some galvanized steel. And definitely that has been proved out that zinc will dissolve in pine saw. And then we get to the brass. And the brass I found very interesting because the copper didn't fare very well. The zinc didn't fare very well. Brass is made of copper and zinc. But look at my shiny area. It's still relatively shiny. So the etching on this was very, very minimal. Now, if I turn it right there where you can see, again, had this been fully submerged, I don't think we would have seen much of a difference. But because there is a distinct line where you have the section that was out of the liquid and the section that was in the liquid, we have this oxidization band. And that is, to me, very huge. Again, the polished side, that was this edge, pretty smooth all the way across. So I would say that brass fares fairly well in pine saw as long as it is fully submerged. So what are my takeaways? What are my conclusions? First of all, if you're going to use a chemical like pine saw that is designed to clean your house, to clean something like car parts, you're doing so at your own risk. It says nowhere on the label, throw your carburetor in pine saw and it'll get nice and clean. Second, etching can be a potential side effect of using pine saw as a soaking solvent for any parts that you are cleaning. So if you can minimize the amount of time that the parts are in the solution, whether that's using a little elbow grease, whether that's using an ultrasonic cleaner, Whatever we're doing to minimize that time, you're going to minimize the etching. Third, we need to fully submerge parts. I don't care if it's aluminum, which really had no visible change at the line between the air and the liquid. I still think you are running the risk of having oxidization and damage to your parts if they are not fully submerged. I want to thank those of you that have made comments on my videos. It was a comment that brought us down this rabbit hole, and I know that I've learned a lot. I've learned that I do need to be careful what I soak in the pine saw, and more importantly, I need to limit the amount of time that it was soaked in the pine saw. But I also learned that long-term exposure, even though it might mark the metal, is really going to have little effect on the overall integrity of the metal. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.